All right, so hopefully you've watched the pre-video for this chapter that talks about what a t-distribution is. But as a quick reminder, we use a t-distribution when we do not have our population standard deviation. So that means we actually use this a whole lot because it's pretty rare to have your population standard deviation. Okay, and so that's gonna change the probability a little bit when we look at things. And so I wanna go through the difference between a one mean z as in zebra interval and a one mean t as in tiger interval. Okay, so this one from chapter 16 is the one that you have already learned. And now we're going to learn this um, for a t interval. So we're still looking at finding a confidence interval or a range of values uh, for our population mean. And these start out the same. A parameter statement is we're looking for some sort of percent confidence interval. Um, and then we have our assumptions and conditions. So two of these are the same. We have simple random sample. And then you need to know that either your sample is large enough, meaning that n is greater than 30, or you have a normally distributed population. And you would know that because it's either stated in the problem or you've made the normal probability plot. Here's where our assumptions and conditions change, though. On our one mean v interval, sigma is known. So this is our population standard deviation. On a t interval, we don't know the population standard deviation. So what we're going to use is our sample standard deviation. And we use the letter S for that. So if you see the letter S, that is your sample standard deviation. Do you see the Greek letter sigma? That's your population standard deviation. So there's one difference right there. Okay, another difference, the name of the test, this is a one mean t interval instead of a z. And then the way we construct our interval is a little bit different. So we still, it's still centered at x bar, but instead of using z star, we're going to use t star instead. And we're going to use s, our sample standard deviation, instead of sigma. Okay, so um, to find your t star, you're going to need to know your degrees of freedom. So your degrees of freedom are defined to be n minus 1. So you take your sample size and subtract 1. Okay, And you can, if you want to look up exactly what t star is, you can use this t dot inverse command. Okay, You put in the probability and the degrees of freedom, which we just talked about how to find that. Um, and that would give you just the t star part. If you were looking to get the whole plus or minus, so the t star, um, S over the square root of N, you can use this confidence.t command. Okay, but all of this is built into the Excel calculator. So you um, can certainly just go to the chapter 20 tab for the one mean T interval and use that to, uh, to work through this. Right, and then our last step is the conclusion. Our conclusion is exactly the same. We are blank percent confident that the true mean, that you put some sort of context here, is somewhere between this number and that number. Okay, so our only changes here is in the one assumption, and that one assumption actually tells us whether if we have our population or our sample standard devi deviation, tells us exactly what procedure we're using. So either a Z or a T, and then the formula has a slight little change. Otherwise, this process is exactly the same.